Well, it's good to see all of you tonight. I got to start on time because I only have 30 minutes. They didn't cut me back to 30 minutes on Wednesday night for a little while. And then at 7, they're going to do the Judgment House uh, rehearsal and all of that kind of good stuff. Take your Bible and go to Revelation <clears throat> chapter 20. If you go to Revelation chapter 20, uh, real quick, I'm just going to go over just a few verses that pertain to, I've been studying this for a little bit, and I don't, I don't claim to have it all figured out yet. Uh, so maybe y'all can help me. In the Bible, there's all kinds of books. There's the book of remembrance that uh, God refers to. There's the book of life. And then in Revelation chapter number 21, or 20 rather, we're fixing to read, starting about verse number 11. He says, and the books, plural, was open, and then another book was open. And so we're going to look at this to see if we can all figure it out by comparing the scriptures together, okay? Look at verse number, let's see, 11. If you don't have a Bible, it'll be on the screen there for you. And I saw a great white throne. Now, when we start reading, there's, here's where I'm reading from. We're plumb to the end, plumb off, almost off the, the board here in uh, chapter 21. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books, plural, was opened, and another book, singular, was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, plural, according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works." And death and hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, uh, here's a couple of things we want to try to deal with. This may take me a couple of Wednesday nights to get all of this in because of our time frame. Now, there are two different judgments. If I was preaching this on a Sunday morning, by now, y'all have heard me say this enough to know there's a difference in preaching on Sunday morning and teaching on Wednesday night. If I was preaching on Wednesday, uh, Sunday morning, I would say all the saved show up at the judgment seat of Christ and all the lost show up at the great white throne judgment. I would do that on a Sunday morning just to make uh, a comparison. Technically and biblically and doctrinally, that's not true. There are other people that are going to show up at the great white throne judgment. I'll show you those here in just a minute. There are two different judgments. Now let me point this out to you. Obviously, you know where that we are. Everything before the cross, Old Testament. The New Testament starts at the cross, Hebrews 9. Everything after the cross to the rapture, here's the rapture where the church is caught away. Everybody from the cross to the rapture, whenever that is, the trumpet may sound tonight, I don't know. But whoever, the only group, the only group that's going up at the rapture is this group right here. Nobody from the Old Testament is going up right here. Nobody, obviously, from the tribulation is going up right here because it ain't happened yet. The only group that's going up right here, you say, how do you know? The dead. In Christ shall rise first. There's only one group of people that's in Christ. People in the Old Testament were not in Christ. They were in faith. They weren't in Christ. Uh, people in the tribulation are not in Christ. People in the millennial reign are not in Christ. The only group that's in Christ is from the cross when the church started all the way to the rapture. And these people called the church, the saved, go up at the rapture. And then we go before the judgment seat of Christ. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, starting about verse number 11. I don't have it on the screen for you, uh, but it says something like, For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. There are six things. Only saved people will be at this judgment. There's five crowns. How do you like those crowns? Looks just like them. 
uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five crowns that you can receive at the judgment seat of Christ. The only people that will be right here at this judgment will be this group of people called the church. We go up at the rapture, and then we go stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ. The people that go before the judgment seat of Christ are all saved in Christ. Now, remember this. Now, the, nobody will go to hell from this judgment. This judgment is not designed to send somebody to hell. This judgment is designed to give you your inheritance, your reward, um, one of these five, maybe you'll get two. You might get three. I don't know. But there's five you could receive. And the only people, I'm, I, keep, I keep saying this, repetition is key to learning. Judge seat of Christ, of Christ. You have to be of Christ to be at this judgment. And the only people that are of Christ is right here, church to the rapture, in Christ, right here, judge seat of Christ, only saved people. Nobody goes to hell from here. This is where I get my reward. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. If any man uh, uh, work abide with it which he hath built their own, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work don't abide, which he hath built their own, he shall suffer loss, loss of reward, not loss going to hell. Nobody's going to hell from here. Now, I think I've hopefully cleared that up. Over here, you got the second coming, thousand year millennial reign. This is in chapter 19. This is in chapter 20. We just read it. Everybody else, Old Testament saints, saved and lost. The lost people from the church age, saved and lost from the tribulation, saved and lost from the millennial reign, will stand before God at the great white throne and give an account and find out if their name is written in the book of life. This is also called, um, let me show you how the, these are used interchangeably. The next chapter, 21 verse 27, And there shall be in no wise enter into anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. The book of life, the Lamb's book of life, used interchange. Same book, same book. There's only one. It's the Lamb's book of life, book of life, same book. Now, what we just read in um, chapter 20, it says the books, let me find out, the books were opened. And uh, let's see, chapter 20 and verse what? 12. Let's see. And I saw, verse 12, And I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. We just saw in chapter 21, the Lamb's book of life. Same one. So there's a book that has names in it. And there's some names that are in there, some names it's not. And if your name is not found written in that book, then you're cast into the lake of fire. Then there's books opened. Now, um, let me see if I got a, um, here's a verse right here. John 12 and verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Who's going to judge him? The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. So guess what is going to judge? The books were open plural. Anybody want to take a while? Well, don't take a wild guess because um, the books were opened. The books. Now, this is one book, but it contains many books. Okay. If you were to get in trouble, you have to go before a judge in the, the county or federal, whatever. They have what they call the Tennessee Code annotated, the TCA Code, TCA 104-da-da-da-da-da. You get speeding or whatever. Now, 
you don't see the judge mostly picking up the book and looking through the book to find out what law you broke because most of the time they already know it because they've done it so much, they already know it in their mind. If there was ever a law that you broke, you get pulled over, they come to your house, knock on your door, whatever, they're going to charge you with a certain crime that is found written in a book. Matter of fact, it's not just one, it's a series of books because they all don't go in one book. Uh, they used to be green, uh, a light green color, TCA code annotated, and there's several <laughs> volumes of that. And so in that list, all the laws, and if you break one of those laws, you go before the judge, and he opens this book and says, all right, this law right here is the one you broke. Now, the people that stand before God, the great white throne judgment, the books were open. I wonder what book that's going to be. Well, John 12 says he's going to judge in the last day by his word. Did you know that every sin that you've ever committed is found in this book? So you're going to be judged. Now, when I say y'all, I'm not necessarily talking about y'all because if you're saved like I am, you're not going to be here. You're going to be over here, right? right? Okay, so we're talking about other folks that are lost. If you're in this room right now and you're lost, not planning on getting saved, don't want to get saved, uh, don't believe in the Lord, don't believe in the cross and all that kind of stuff, it's a free country, help yourself, but you're going to stand before God right here. And the books are going to be opened. And everything according to, let's see what it says here, verse 12, let's see. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. That's the one that's got names in it. And the dead, the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the what? The books. How are you going to be judged according to their works? So if you sin against God, he's going to open the book and say, boom, right there is where you stand right here. Then he's going to turn the page and say, boom, you did that one right there too. Right there. and boy. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine standing in the courtroom and everybody sitting there and, it, and God's going through all of your sins. This is right here, right here. You know. You're going to be judged according to their works. See, gave up the dead which were in them. This is all lost people. The death and hell, people in our hell right now, delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Now, here's... Here's something I want to point out to you. We're going to be judged by our works. But if we've done works, it's not a matter of if you've done a good, enough good works, you get to go to heaven. Mm -mm. If you've done works for the Lord since you've been saved, you receive a, anybody remember? A reward right here. Over here is totally different. God's going to judge by your works to see how hot your hell is going to be. Mm -mm. You say you got verses for that? I do. He, Jesus told the, uh, the Pharisees, he said, you shall receive the greater damnation. If there's a greater damnation, then there's a lesser. It's all in the Bible. So there's some folks that have sinned a whole lot that's going to be lost and their hell's going to be hotter than some, you know. You say, well, you may, it might be possible that mine won't be as hot. Look here. <laughs> Hot's hot. <laughs> I don't want the lesser hot. You know what I'm saying? So don't, don't take what I just said and say, well, if I do good, then uh, my hell won't be as hot. Well, it probably won't, but I still don't want the lesser hot. Um, now, He's going to judge out of those things written in the books right here. And then another book is opened, which is the uh, book of life. And here's the names. Verse 15 said, <clears throat> And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into uh, the lake of fire. Matter of fact, remember who I told you going to be there? Old Testament saints, lost saints. Lost people from church age. Tribulation, lost and saved. Kingdom, thousand-year millennial reign, lost and saved. Also, 
If y'all remember a group of people found in Jude, the first chapter, only one chapter in Jude, there is a group of people that's going to be judged right here, and it's the fallen angels. Y'all remember the third of the angels that left when Lucifer left? They're going to be judged. Matter of fact, it's found in 1 Corinthians 3 and about, I mm, can't remember the verse, but it's in 1 Corinthians 3, where the Bible says we, church, are going to judge angels. The great white throne. Lucifer, the one that fell and took a third of those angels, he's going to be judged right here. This is where he's going to be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. So you're going to have people like Moses, Elijah, all your Old Testament saints will be here. You say, how do you know? Because their names are going to be in the book. So technically, it's not just all lost people. You're going to have tribulation saints. You say, people are going to be in the same tribulation? Yeah, they will. I'll show you some verses here in a minute. We'll get to it. Uh, there's some people going to be saved from the tribulation. There's people going to be saved from the millennial. They're going to show up right here. And guess what? Their name's going to be in the book. Then there's going to be lost people, all the lost, from everywhere. The dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. All the lost, the dead, hell, the people that are in hell right now are going to be delivered up and stand before God. And their names are not going to be in the book. And whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life, guess what? They don't go back to hell. They go to the lake of fire. Somebody said, well, can you explain that? Well, yeah, I have before. But right now, if somebody dies without, God, without Jesus Christ, they go to hell. Hell's in the center of the earth right now. When this happens, death and hell be delivered up. So hell right now is sort of like the county jail. Commit a crime, murder, something real serious, they take you to the county jail first until you can go see the judge. And then when you go see the judge... It's a bad enough crime, murder, whatever. He sentences you to life in prison. You don't go back to the county jail. You go to the penitentiary prison. You see the difference? Somebody law, go to hell, county jail. <laughs> don't tell Jeff Box to count his, <laughs> tell the county jails. <laughs> There's a hell down there, you know. <laughs> All right. Go before the judge, and then you get sentenced for a long term. You go to the penitentiary. That's just a simple example of that. Now, uh, let me see. Here's one, Romans 2 and verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by who? By Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So the secrets of men are going to be judged. The books were open, Genesis through Revelation. Anything you've ever done against Christ, against God, will be found in the books. Now, uh, let's look at uh, some other stuff here. Uh, you say, well, well, let's just look. Let's just compare. Philippians. Now, here's something you need to remember. Philippians was written right here by the Apostle Paul to the church okay, of Philippi. Paul says, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my yoke fellows whose names are in the book of life. These are saved people from this age right here. Their names are written in the book of life. Uh, let me see. We've got some other here. Here's some other verses. Luke 10 and verse 20. This is Jesus talking because it's in the red. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written where? In heaven. Now, we'll get into something I don't know. i got uh, just a few more minutes left. Here's what I want to decide. I may have to wait till next week to get to, into this. When are names written in the book of life? When are they? And you have to look really hard to find out when these names were written in this book. Is it when you get saved? So let me, let me point out this. 
I've even said this. Can, I'm fixing to admit that I have been wrong. It's only happened a couple times. <laughs> the gospel songs that we sing talks about Jesus writing your name down in the book. Did y'all realize there's nowhere in the Bible where it says Jesus has, when you get saved, write your name down in the book. Everywhere you see, it says your name's are written like it's been in there for a good while. So, and 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 I've been, I, I, you know, we say that during preaching, and it gets a lot of amens. And everybody, says, Whoo, that's good, you know. And and we say that, we say that, and the gospel songs they say, "Boy, your name, uh, uh, all that kind of stuff." I think there's a song that we sing in our hymn book. Sometimes there's a new name written in glory, and it's mine, ain't it mine? And I, I haven't been able. I've run every reference I can find, and I cannot find. Now, obviously. He writes them in there sometime. But there's no reference to when you come down here, ask Jesus Christ to come in your heart, the Lord's up there just waiting, waiting on you to ask him to come in your heart, and he's, he starts writing and puts your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's nowhere that that is found. Now, think about this. If that's true, now I'm going somewhere, and I may, I may, this is what they call a cliffhanger. I may cliffhang you tonight, and, you, and this, you'll be back next Wednesday night, I promise. <laughs> but if that's true, that your name only gets in the Lamb's Book of Life only when you get saved, then what about babies that are born that are not saved yet, but they're safe? Cliffhanger. Now, you'll have to do your own homework. I've done mine. Now, if you don't feel like doing your homework, come back next Wednesday night, and I've already done mine, and I'll, I'll give you the cliff note version. <laughs> now, let me, let me really make you scratch your head right here, okay? Y'all remember, I'm going to show you a verse right here. Because it is possible. Now, boy. I really shouldn't do this with seven minutes left. It is possible to get your name. Mm, no, I ain't going to say it that way. <laughs> Y'all see this group right here? Y'all see that group right there? If you're saved, you're in that group. Your name can never be removed from that book. Okay? Now, with that said... It's possible for other groups to get their name removed. You say, you got Bert? Well, yeah, I told you I did my homework. Y'all remember a fellow by the name of Moses? Moses went up on the mountain. He come down, and boy, everybody done gathered around a golden calf. They done elected Aaron as the pastor, and boy, they done went, I mean, they got the music going and all this, and everybody's taking their clothes off and dancing around a golden calf. Y'all remember that? Moses comes down, breaks the Ten Commandments. He gets so mad, and then he calls out to God on their behalf. He said, yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast, notice, hast written. It's already been written. And the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So notice, in the Old Testament, it is possible to get your name removed from the book. Isn't that something? Now, Psalm 69 and verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So there's a possibility for some folks to be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. Let me give you another one. Let me, let me scoop down here. Go. 
this is going to be, hallelujah. I, I tell you what, let me, give you, let me give you one right here before we have to go. Revelation. Now, when I say revelation, in the tribulation period, Revelation 3 and verse 5 is where we're at. We're not over here with us. We're over here in the tribulation. Okay? How do I know? He that overcometh. You know what they're doing in the, in the, in the tribulation? They're trying to overcome. They're trying not to take the mark of the beast. They're trying to endure to the end, Matthew 24, 13. They're trying to endure so they can be saved. You know what I'm saying? He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. In the tribulation, remember, not us, your name, once it's in the book, sealed to the day of redemption, cannot be removed. But people over here, if they're coming through the tribulation, and all of a sudden, they take the mark of the beast. They take the mark of the beast. They didn't overcome. It's like you don't even exist. Somebody else in the kingdom. Then, let me get over here. He says what? He says, depart from me, I don't know you. It's no record that you were ever even alive. Now, y'all don't get so depressed. If you're saved, you're, I mean, it's it, nowhere I'm talking about y'all. But I'm talking about your lost friends and your lost, hey, it's almost like, you say, can you prove? Yes. Did y'all know in Luke 16, there's a story of the rich man goes to, anybody remember? Goes to hell. And then he says, Lazarus. He names Lazarus. What's the rich man's name? He don't know it. It's gone. That's why he named Lazarus, because his name's in. <clears throat> What's your name? Lazarus. Okay, let me go to the L's. There it is, right there. Enter in. Sir, what's your name? Well, I'm the rich man. Mm. There's no record of you ever living. I never knew you. Does that make sense? All right, let me give you this. I'll have to prove it next week. Can't prove it tonight, but I'll prove it. Let me, let me make the statement, and then I can prove it next week. This is what it appears to be. When a person is born, they breathe life into uh, a baby is born. Matter of fact, it's found in Psalm uh, 139. That's where it's at. I'll show it to you next week. Baby's born. They become a part of the book of the living. Book of life. That's how babies get in the book. There comes a certain time when a baby comes to the age of accountability. They hear the gospel preached in a church like this. There comes a time, I don't know how many times, but there's multiple times because God is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. And they walk out of the door and they say no, 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 and later on in life, they say no to Christ for the last time and they go out the door and they take their last breath. I 
I never knew him. That makes sense. That's how when a baby dies before they come, but go to heaven. But when they reject Christ for the last time, or remove their name. And then now, when they stand before God, their name ain't in there. Depart from me, I never knew. I'll have to prove that next week. All right, let me turn that off.